Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Care Manager. My name is Ryan, and I'm joined with Teresa, our Director of Care Management. The both of us work for Easy Living. We're a home care and care management agency serving the Tampa Bay area for over 20 years. Each week, we do a weekly video series about care management and home care services, and we bring our professional lens, Teresa, uh, to ask her about different things that are going on in the world, different things that we come across with families on the home care and care management side, and also questions that we receive from our audience. Uh, Teresa, this week, I actually kind of want to change it up a little bit. Instead of, um, instead of doing a question or a topic, well, we're really going to discuss a topic, but kind of want to just have a conversation with you. So um, obviously, we're, we're here in Florida. Uh, we're in the Tampa Bay area, and um, we have made not only national news, but worldwide news as now being the quote-unquote epicenter of the COVID-19 virus. Um, we have seen our cases drastically increase over the last couple weeks. And I think everyone is a bit concerned on all sides, whether um, young, old, or in the middle. Um, I know even our school-aged um, you know, families are, are dealing with the decision about their children and the teachers. And so, you know, I think we went into this several months ago thinking that, hey, we're going to lock down for a couple weeks and or even a couple months, and then, you know, we'll be back to normal. And, you know, but as this is ever, you know, ever changing and changing every single day, yeah. Um, now we're, we're going into, you know, months, you know, five or six now with this. And I think the stress and the anxiety and the isolation um, are starting to wear on people. And I know, I'm sure you can attest to this, even with our elderly people, it's probably even worse because they're the most vulnerable. So what do you, what do you have to say about that? I mean, what, what kind of, in your care management expertise, what kind of things can um, our seniors do maybe to help themselves out, um, even if they're not in a facility, but maybe at home? Oh my gosh, Ryan. I mean, so true. I'm glad you changed it up and we are talking about this because um, it is so very important. You know, the first thing I can say is just everybody, we just need to breathe. We just need to stop and, and sit back for a minute and breathe and try to reduce the stress in our own world around us and acknowledge that, you know, the person that I run into at the grocery store or the driver in the parking lot that I am trying to, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to get that, that parking place, you know, you don't know what's going on in, in their world. Maybe their mother just um, was notified that they had been exposed to uh, playing bridge. They were exposed to COVID-19 and now they have to get tested. You know, a lot of people and like in my world, you know, not a lot really changed in the beginning. You know, it only changes when it affects you personally and it could be, you know, with your job, it could be with a loved one being tested positive. So everybody is coming from this in a, in a different place. And we just have to acknowledge that your situation and my situation are going to be different. So I just need to respect, you know, your situation. I, I, I don't even need to know what it is, but just know that it could be different. And you might be going through a lot and, you know, you're not sharing it, you're putting on that facade that everything's fine and you're going through your day. Um, and then you just may have a, an issue to where, you know, boom, people start exploding and, it, and it's very, it's very challenging. It's very sad. And, you know, we need to just regroup and find what brings us inner peace and brings us, you know, to calm down. And one is, you know, maybe not watching everything on the news or <laughs> not believing everything on Facebook. I mean, you were just, you know, saying earlier that, you know, one of the reports, you know, they're, they're changing and, you know, what, what they had been reporting is not necessarily the case. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I think, I think the news doesn't help, but put negativity out there. And I think, the, the number one thing that I keep seeing out there, as you mentioned, is just step away from it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, fine to check in and get an update, but you know, but don't, don't live on it every single day. Don't be on Facebook every single day. Um, you know, it's just, I've, I've never, I've never seen personally people argue over the most minuscule things anymore. Um, and I think it's just, I think that's a, 
a result of everyone being isolated, everyone's being lies being affected and turned upside down that, you know, that people are just finding any outlet to get the stress off their chest. So it's, let's go argue on Facebook with people at this point in time. Yeah, know, right? exactly. And uh, I can only imagine what like our, our elderly population is feeling at this point in time. You know, they might not be tech savvy to at least get on the computer and maybe find something to do. But, you know, I, you know, I know this is, this is hard for them even more. Exactly. Because in their world to begin with, um, in that later stage of life, they're losing control over things. Yeah. They, you know, uh, and it's almost like they go through a grieving process you know, on a regular basis, they're losing the ability to drive. They're losing, they're losing friends. They're losing their freedom. They're, you know, children are coming in trying to make decisions for them. they they feel like they're losing control. So now even more so, and, and it's almost like those of us that are not in our advanced age, in our advanced years, we're kind of getting a taste of that. This is what it's like to be isolated. This is what it's like not to have control, uh, you know, and it's a wake up call. So, you know, and I was telling a friend last night, you know, we can only control what we can control. And, and, and really at, at that too is, you know, how much control do we have over anything, but you can control, I can control that I am staying six feet from my colleagues. I can control that I'm washing my hands. I can control that I'm wearing a mask. You know, I can control, I am reaching out to my mother who's isolated every day. And oh my gosh, you know, I'm, we're building, I think an even stronger relationship because I'm learning things about her that, you know, even though I, we used to joke, oh, mom's telling that story again, that story again. And I'm hearing stories I have never heard before <laughs> because I'm able to spend, you know, more time and, and focusing on you know, tell me about that, you know, tell me about that story, when, you know, you and dad met or whatever, you know, the situation is. Yeah. So, you know, I never even thought about like what, what you just said about, you know, us uh, people that are not in, maybe necessarily in the elderly isolated population, but yeah, we, we really are getting, you know, a taste of what it's like to, to, mm -hmm. to be almost cut off from the world in a, in a sense, you know, except for when you make arranged visits or, or you go visit them. Yeah. It's, it really is surreal. I mean, you know, if you're personally with, you know, my parents, my wife's parents too, like we had to, you know, because of their, their age and their, and their immune systems, you know, we have to, you know, social distance. We haven't seen them in months and it's tough and it's, you know, we're using technology to see them. Yeah. Um, but it's not the same, you know, and, and it definitely is. You do have that sense of isolation. I think that's really what's getting to people is that I think humans naturally want to be around other humans. And then when there's some sort of barrier, whether it's a physical barrier or, you know, a mask or a, having to stay six feet apart. It's, you know, even though you have a mask on, you might be around someone, you can't see their facial expressions or a smile unless you have one of those, you know, see-through masks. Yeah. But I think that bothers people too. I mean, I know the masks are, are great to, to protect people from the virus, but you still aren't getting to see people's smiles. You know, I think that's a big thing to people do. So. Well, the human touch is so important and to go without that. And I've always thought about my clients that were in the nursing homes by themselves, they didn't have family. They didn't have someone to, to touch them and to hold their hand before all this. And so maybe, you know, like I said, maybe this is a wake up call. And, and I've had this conversation with my pastor. This is a wake up call. You know, we really need to treat our elderly with love and respect. And because, you know, for fortunate, we'll all be there one day. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, oh, I don't ever want to grow old. Well, Marilyn Monroe never grew old. I would mm -hmm. rather see an old Marilyn Monroe any day than, you know, the, how her story ended. Yeah. You know, I want to I think that, old. that's good, too, <laughs> that you said, you know, and maybe it's a wake-up call to to talk more to our elderly loved ones or elderly relatives or friends, you know? Like yeah. you said, there's stories there that you might not have ever heard. They... A lot of them lived in a very, very interesting time. And a lot of them lived through something kind of similar, you know, that we're going through right now. Some of them might have lived through the 1918 pandemic. Some of, most of them lived through the Great Depression. And, you know, it was, it's eerily similar to kind of, I think, what we're all dealing with right now. So, you know, they might have a unique outlook on, on what the situation is. Exactly. And in a time period where, and, and 
by no means I, do I want to get political, and I don't, but in a time period where people are talking about erasing history, for whatever reason someone wants to do that, this is a time period we really need to be learning about our history. You know, I've, I know when, when my mother was uh, uh, in her early 20s, you know, she almost died of the flu. I forget that, which type it was, you know, and I've been able to have these conversations. We've had, and again, that facilitates the conversation about advanced directives. Mm -hmm. You know, so these conversations, not just about our past and what we've done, but how can we take what we know to, to make tomorrow better? So I, I know my mother's wishes. I know what her advanced directives um, state and what she wants, you know, so in any situation, you know, if you take a bad situation, you've got to make the best of it. What can we learn from this? What can we take away? And, and again, for our seniors, how can we reach out to them? You know, as care managers, again, we're doing FaceTime, we're sending cards, we're doing phone calls, we're, we're nagging these facilities and I'm going, well, my, my client doesn't want to do a FaceTime with me because she has advanced dementia. I haven't been able to be in that building in three months. Let me see her, you know, turn, you know, let me see her on, you know, on the camera. Let me FaceTime. Let me see her. Does she have bruises? Do I need to be checking that? You know, if somebody's at home, you know, what, sending a gift, sending a care package, sending a birthday box that has, you know, a surprise birthday party in a box right there, the cake, the balloons, the present, everything, you know, just. Absolutely. And two, like, um, you know, it just came out recently that, you know, people, families can hire a company like uh, Easy Living mm -hmm. to go into those facilities too, or into people's homes. And obviously, um, you know, we can ensure that our caregivers um, going into those facilities are COVID testing. They actually, um, those, those buildings that we work in, they can add our caregivers to their census and we'll be on the two week testing rotation just mm -hmm. like the rest of their staff are. So it's a good option to have um, if you're not able to get into that facility, um, you know, let our caregivers or care managers be the eyes and ears in there. Exactly. One of our care managers has a birthday party surprise for her client that's in a facility. They, she can't, you know, go in and do a party in the room or anything like that, but they're doing an outside social distancing birthday party and it's only you know two or three people that that can come at a time and it's limited she had to schedule an appointment and she has to bring her own water and and bring everything but this is going to be huge for the client who doesn't understand why well the care manager quit visiting you know, she yeah. doesn't understand absolutely so this is going to be huge well Teresa thank you so much I you know I, I appreciate the good conversation I think you know, I think that's what we need to do is continue to have conversations, continue to talk. And, you know, and if any of you out there want to, you know, start a conversation, let us know. Mm -hmm. Comment in the, put a comment down about how you're feeling, anything you want to talk about, and yeah. you'd be happy to engage back. So, Teresa, thank you as always for, for joining. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone else, for jumping on today, too. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.